everyone wow i've been really looking forward to sharing what i have to share today uh, it really has been a journey let me tell you uh, it's uh it's about time we're gonna really learn some information hopefully that will crack the code and help you really enjoy life more enjoy um, you know, what God has to offer in this world in, in a healthy and a good way for, for very good reasons, to really keep ourselves healthy, strong, and uh, full of vitality and life. Um, really, because like, there's just so many opinions out there, and you'll read this book, and it'll even advise you, you shouldn't have, you know, carbs at night, and then one book will tell you, oh, you can only really have protein in, in the daytime. So it's not 100% anywhere uh, really clarified. But hopefully after tonight, we'll, we'll get to know certain ideas about how to keep ourselves healthy, uh, fit, and full of life and vitality, even if we don't completely yet um, know uh, the difference between everything that's out there. But you have to like trust that um, with time and with trial and error, you'll see, you know, really what works best for you. But I have to begin with saying that even after all we're going to learn today, really like under eating a little bit, you know, it's how much you eat at one sitting that's the number one key component. I mean, when my father-in-law was on his deathbed, and he's a doctor and he wrote books about health, he had mentioned, you know, that the main ingredient that he saw was people that, you know, um, mostly, you know, a little under eight, Second was that they exercised and moved, and third was what they ate. So knowing that from the beginning, it will really help ease your, uh, you know, tension maybe a little bit about what we're going to about to cover here. Because really it's not easy, you know, you have to eat three times a day, and it's just sometimes so difficult to make food tasty, and it's, it's so hard sometimes when a person has like this rigid um, uh, way of eating that just is so stressful that, uh, that the, 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 the whole stress of it takes the joy of life away almost. So hopefully we'll get to a place of balance. Um, but there are key components and information that we're going to cover from the book called Turn Up the Heat. Um, by Dr. Phillips Goglia, um, and also information from The Body Ecology Diet by Donna Gates. These two books really helped me a lot. And of course, um, things that I've uh, written in my Reaching New Heights book through Health and Happiness that really changed my life in, in a most amazing way. So I'm hoping the information also will help you. So let's turn up the heat. Why does um, Dr. Gogolia even talk about turning up the heat? Turning up the heat means that you need to eat appropriately and a certain type of food for your certain metabolic uh, 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 blood type that, act, that ends up helping your body create heat. And that heat then helps burn the fat and the calories and helps the body efficiently uh, make use of the food and then ends up helping the person stay fit and lean. Um, because too much under eating causes a lot of problems in the body. First of all, it starts to get in a very um, emergency state, like maybe there's a famine coming along, so I better store this food uh, into fat because I might not have a next meal for I don't know when. So, um, you know, 
he recommends to eat two to four hours um, and snacking so that you keep a regular flow of food and so that your body can actually, um, you know, turn up its heat to be able to function properly. And I have to tell you from my own personal experiences, two times in my life, um, thank God I was blessed with being able to have a baby and the whole pregnancy I did really fine. Um, did not gain a lot of weight and was uh, vibrant and full of energy and then my baby was born and it was a whole different story. Um, the baby was colicky and I wasn't sleeping enough. It was waking up every one and a half hours. Um, I wasn't able to eat really so right because um, anything I ate really was difficult for the baby under the circumstance of suffering colic. It was just a very challenging time. And I was surprisingly gaining weight even though I was not eating as much as when I was actually, you know, before pregnancy and even during pre pregnancy. And um, I came across a book actually at the time that was called The Zone Diet and for many different reasons, it was explaining how important it was uh, for certain uh, proteins um, for your immune system. Um, because really, you know, the number one key factor of keeping your immune system is having, um, you know, protein. So, and at the time, I was getting very sickly. I was getting bronchitis and ammonians and, oh my goodness, a cold every like month or, or month and a half. It was, it was intense time. Um, so, fast forward now, 33 years later, <laughs> Baruch Hashem or more, and, uh, well, actually 24 years later, okay, but... 33 years is when I got married, but it took a while till I had a baby. So fast forward, and again, I'm noticing a certain pattern. My daughter-in-law had a baby, and they're, um, they're with us, and I'm helping with the baby, and I'm not sleeping at nights, and I, I was under eating, and I was slowly like thinking, okay, so I'm eating less and it's not a big deal, I'm functioning, I'll be fine, you know, but I noticed that I was eating less calories, skipping meals, and gaining weight, like, rapidly. Like, I'm like, did I have a baby? Like, I felt like the same, like, I thought, okay, maybe I'm my metabolism or something, but then I was, like, remembering, um, you know, the previous books that I'd read, and then, by miracle, somehow this book called Turn Up the Heat came out, and it made me realize how important it is not to skip meals, and how important it is to constantly have a flow, again, every two, three, even, you know, max four hours um, to eat so that um, the body heat increases, and that your body won't be in that scare mode that you're not going to be eating maybe for another week like so let me store this food as fat so and it was again i was feeling um not as vibrant and not as uh, strong but mostly what was shocking was that i was gaining a little weight as I was eating less. So many times clients of mine would tell me, you know, I really don't barely eat and I keep gaining weight no matter what I do. So if this sounds like your life and your challenge, um, hopefully after today, um, you know, uh, you'll see a difference in your life. Um, so, and it is difficult, lack of time, lack of uh, sleep. It, it all ha it takes its toll, not only short term, but also long term. Um, so, I, I want to explain to you um, some of this doctor's theories um, about the three different metabolic types of personalities. 
that you're born with. Um, and you could check by taking your blood test on your lipids and, um, and, but you may know yourself, like some people, they'll eat a fourth of a bagel, they'll feel bloated, they'll feel so tired, like as if they ate like 10 course meal, they will um, start to gain weight, um, inches, uh, when they uh, more eat pro um, carbohydrates in, instead of protein. So he says that 70% of the population um, are the fat and protein efficient types. Um, that means they thrive on protein and they um, need the fat to be able to burn fat. And of course, uh, healthy fat. You know, there's a, uh, there's, um, uh, it's called SOS. It's a real problem these days. People are overeating salt, unhealthy fake salt, oil, unhealthy fake oil, and of course, super processed sugar. And these three things really wreak havoc on, on your system. First of all, um, the, 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 the salt, the real salt, the Himalayan salt is really medicinal and has a lot of value. So a lot of people think, oh, you have to decrease salt. Well, but you're needing the healthy salts from uh, which contains the minerals um, that balance the body's expansive um, energy and allows things to, um, you know, move efficiently in, in your body. Um, the, the fake oils, if you even know how they're made, I've been many years to many different places all around the world teaching these seminars and, and uh, having the opportunity also to study by many top uh, doctors and professionals and nutritional um, uh, personnel that have described the process of, of these canola oils and all these fake oils. They use like a lot of chemicals to extract the oil. Then they need a chemical to take the blackness out. And then they need another hazardous chemical to take the blackness because it, it really burns the oil. So it needs another oil uh, chemical to like, um, Conference recording, press one. To return to the conference, press star. Let me check. Okay, so, um, and then they need another chemical to, to get rid of the smell of the other chemical that makes the oil white or clear or, you know, not black. And of course, sugar, like we know, is just so toxic for your brain. It just like goes straight into your blood, crosses the blood brain barrier and wrecks so much havoc and, and, and feeds candida and feeds like yeasts and, and just, uh, and cancer, just really not good. But especially for someone who's very carbohydrate sensitive, um, meaning the one who's born, and this again, 74% of the population are fat and protein um, efficient. So they can't really tolerate too much carbohydrates. Um, so really they should eat 50% protein, 25% fat, and the rest 25% carbs. So then there's 23 uh, 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 the population that um, are carb efficient and they more easily are able to have, um, you know, carbohydrates. Now, of course, not all carbohydrates are alike, so you want to definitely, I'm sure you know about, you know, whole grain foods, um, less processed, the better. So yes, um, you know, if you're gonna choose uh, you know, brown rice or hemp seed uh, or amaranth or quinoa or uh, quinoa uh, or kasha. So 
these um, are the better choices. But um, so here though, everyone does need protein. So, but this, this group of individuals, they can get by with 20% protein and less fat, 12% and 68% they can thrive on carbs. Like you know people, they, they like maybe were your roommates or in dorm time and, and they were just woofing down like all the carbs in the world and they were like this skinny pickle. But again, we have to be careful because it's not so much what you look on the outside, it's the internal health that's super important. Because I know many people who, you know, were eating pizzas and, and just totally um, freestyle with their diet and they were skinny pickle, as they say, and they had a heart attack at age 50 and, 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 and younger. So it's not so much, you know, um, that these people can just freely have the pizzas. Um, it's again, you know, of the food type and the amount as well as making sure that your system has the efficient protein as well because protein is needed to increase immune efficiency. Um, again, very important, even if you're the, you know, carb type. Now, there's 3% that he mentions of the population that can utilize both categories. And so they can, you know, fluctuate between eating carbs more or protein more, and they're okay. So you can go to your doctor and you can do a full lipid study, you know, of your HDL, your LD, uh, LDLs, your cholesterol, your triglyceride levels. Um, but most people, they can even figure it out without going to the doctor. They can just know, I am so tired when I eat carbs, or I, I see my weight is changing, I see that it's not good for me. Um, again, we got to make sure not to skip meals, because skipping meals causes a gain weight. And again, I went through it two periods of my life and saw it so clearly. Um, it, it's, it's just beyond, beyond like, and long term, because it's just not helping less. And of course, you know, um, you know, too little food can be dangerous as well long term. So we know the body also needs fat to burn the fat. And there's been, you know, back in the days, 30 years ago, when I was like trying to figure this out, okay, 25 years ago, whatever, I remember like it was the fat, low fat, low fat, like no oil on your salad and no avocado and no, no fat yogurts. And it was just like no fat. And, and that's actually not accurate. It, it's been debunked. It, we see, according to many doctors, how um, that fat is, you know, outdated. Um, because we really need the heat from the food that will help us burn the fat as well. So, you know, when you have inconsistent eating habits, it really causes the sugar in your body to yo-yo up and down. And then the irregular nutrients block up the body flow. Um, and to really maintain, you know, the consistent blood sugar levels, um, we need to keep eating and, you know, at least snacking every two to four hours. Um, because again, if the body feels like, oh my gosh, I don't know when I'm going to get the next meal, so I better hoard the food as fat and store it as fat because um, it's feeling in a constant state of emergency and trying to survive by holding the fat. So, Again, yes, as you age a little bit, your metabolism slows down, true, but it could be more that as you get older, you're lazier or you're less active and you don't feel like moving it, you know, or you're not like as uh, excited about your exercise, you feel tired. So it could be your metabolism is slowing down because you're not as active. So that's something else that you need to look into. Um, so the, 
the ingesting the daily foods that are good for your metabolism really bring you to the peak efficiency. And most people don't understand the crucial importance of maintaining this optimal heat pattern in your body through proper food intake. Um, so, and I know it's not easy. It's, it's a tough life. People are waking up early, getting on the bus to go on to their work, and then they have to get home, and it's just, it's, it's, but there are ways, you know, a little more prep work at night, you know, instead of, let's say, other, you know, things that you're doing, um, buying, like, snacks, like, you know, raw, sprouted, you know, almonds are really good, or, you know, again, you know, vegetables that are prepared the night before. And nowadays, in so many kosher stores, there's like prepared cut vegetables. It's so exciting. We're in a time where it's a little more expensive, but a little more easy to, you know, be more prepared for the next day's load of food that we need. Um, so if we, we, if we like skip meals again, and like we end up, losing um, the calories, which also then, um, we also lack the fat, and then the body can't repair muscle tissues. Um, and, and that's also a problem. And that's where the body can become more acidic, and we'll get more into that very soon. Um, so another thing that we really have to be careful about is proper hydration. I cannot emphasize this enough crucial factor because our body is made of 70% of water and um, all these important nutrients in your body can't get to the places without the beautiful flow that water helps this process. Um, it's, it's really critical for so many everyday functioning um, because again it enables the nutrients to get to the cells um, so, uh, Dr. Goglia actually states that to just to get an idea of how much water is needed, if you eat 3.8 gram, I'm sorry, if you eat one gram of carb, you'll need 3.8 grams of water to utilize the carbs properly. Oh my goodness! <laughs> like, come on, do we have to be so scientific? It's so stressful as it is, you know, but do prepare your water the night before. Make sure you have more water like a camel so that, you know, you know, because, because one, first of all, you'll be more hydrated and be less hungry. That's a big factor too, because the water sensation, lack of water sensation, meaning when, when you're dehydrated, it's the same sensation of when you are famished and you're so hungry. So you think it, oh my gosh, I can eat a lion right now. I'm so starving, but it's really, you're dehydrated. So when you get more in a habit of drinking, especially more alkaline water, because you want to be more alkaline, I've switched my water to alkaline. If you want more information about that, please PM me. Um, I, and, you know, because we're going to learn about the difference between us being too acidic and alkaline. So alkaline water actually helps you really get to that pH balance. Um, so, so this water is essential for maintaining proper blood viscosity to balance the nutrients. Um, so let me tell you I don't want you to like you know get too stressed out this is this is about information that's gonna help you be feeling more energy more alive and give you longevity I mean it, it, they say if you change your pattern of eating and drinking you could like add 20 good years to your life even even starting at the age of 50 and, and over um, so to make it simple he says one ounce of water per one pound of body weight. So that means if let's say someone weighs 130, then they'll have to drink 160 ounces of water. So let's say someone weighs 160, they're gonna need to eat a drink 160 ounces of water. 
That means 28 ounces glasses. So, you know, doctors have always said, oh, eight, glass, eight ounces of you know, glasses a day, meaning eight, eight ounces glasses. But that doesn't seem right, um, according to Dr. Goglia, because, you know, many people have different weights, different heights, so how can it be the same water for everybody? Um, so, trust me when I say when you drink the right amount, you're really less tired, you have more energy, you're less hungry, um, and it is kind of annoying to like, you know, constantly be drinking, but the effort is especially, um, you know, important when you're trying to lose weight as well. Um, because really, generally speaking, we want to have a more alkaline diet, uh, especially after age 40. Um, so what I've done recently is I put a reminder, because it's really when you're so busy, you forget to drink and you don't feel maybe um, thirsty. You might get a bit of a headache, you might feel a little like hot, and you're just like, oh wow, am I getting sick? But you're like, no, hello, remember, like that's a sign of dehydration, go drink. So I actually now put on my phone every hour to drink. Some people say every time you go to the restroom, drink up, you know, make sure you drink after you go to the restroom, which is another good reminder. But it really has been helping me having it on my app that come up every hour. Um, and, you know, like iPhone recently made this app to remind you to breathe because it's so important to deep breathe and not like to get more oxygen into your, into your brain, into your body. Um, that's a whole nother class. I read many books on that, just on the topic of breathing more. But anyways, uh, while you drink, breathe, you know, right after. You know, do both, Bezrat Hashem. So, um, but let's say if you worked up a sweat, you went hiking in the Hollywood Hills, I don't know, you know, and, and uh, did an extra workout or danced, you know, until 2 in the morning and someone's... Uh, uh, wedding. So, of course, you know, you want to, you know, ingest a little more to replenish and rebalance your electrolytes. Um, because if you drink too little, this is what happens. Your body moves into, um, it's called insulatory thermostate which means the heat regulation of your body, of your core body temperature, um, drops and you're not able to maintain the proper internal temperature for optimal functioning. Uh, if you don't drink enough body water, um, then uh, automatically, uh, again, your body will drop to a survival strategy of then storing fat if you don't drink enough. Um, and this fat that's stored subcutaneously will then act as an insulation in order to maintain a constant flow of this core temperature. Um, even if your food plan is completely on target. Do you understand here how important it is to drink water? Um, like, Without it, it the, the body again goes into that scare mode and then says, okay, I got to keep my temperature down, so let me put this food into fat and it'll be, you know, insulating the body so that I don't lose um, my heat and whatever else is needed to have my body work efficiently. It stores it to fat. Wow, doesn't that make you want to drink? <laughs> uh, I was telling my daughter-in-law, we got green drinks today, and I'm like, oh, I should save it for the class. And L'chaim, green drinks, so good for you. Um, so, um, again, so your body's going to hoard fat if you're not drinking enough. Uh, so if you drink enough and properly, here and there you can cheat on your diet. You can a little bit enjoy life. Um, and you'll still begin to drop your fat and lose weight. Now, again, sometimes you won't see it on the uh, actual, like, um, weighing machine. 
um, because sometimes you'll be doing exercise and you know the fat will turn to muscle muscles a little more heavier than fat but you'll begin to see the inches for sure um, so even if you don't have the most proper diet but you drink efficiently um, you will be able to you know see a difference in your eventually uh, in your inches and eventually you know on the scale um, and, and so that's good news, you know. Uh, just like Rambam said, and just like Dr. Baychak, uh, my father-in-law, uh, he actually, um, you know, said the same thing as Rambam teaches, that it's really the amount you eat. Second is keeping, you know, the body flow by exercising. And three, and it doesn't have to be that much, like 18, 20 minutes, you know, um, and the third thing is what you eat. So let me explain to you why you don't want to overeat because basically when you have um, too much food in your stomach because one, you didn't chew properly because the chewing properly causes the first enzymes of your mouth to break down the food. So if you're really rushing and you're not chewing your food properly, you didn't break down the food, first of all, it goes so slow down you know, the pipeline to get to your stomach that you think you're still hungry and you keep eating and you keep eating and then all of a sudden, bam, like in a, in a second, like out of nowhere, you're nauseous, you ugh, you feel like, ugh, sick to your stomach, you just overate and you're like suing yourself again, how did I do this? Well, you gotta chew efficiently, number one, so then you know that you're satiated and then your stomach says, oh yeah, you've had enough food, enough. And highly recommended 10 minutes, like before you go for that second plate or that second round, wait. Because in 10 minutes, you'll feel like, oh, I can't eat anymore. Whereas if you don't, uh, you know, then you feel so free to eat more. Uh, also recommended is to drink water again before you even start your meal. So that way, you know, even 10 minutes before your meal, um, so that way you already start hydrating your body and cooling down that like that seemingly hunger pain because you really need the water um, so when the food finally gets to the destination in your stomach and now too much because you didn't eat properly and efficiently then all of a sudden your stomach is so full then the second enzymes that are needed to break down the food ends up not getting to the food like it just no way it's too stuffed i mean you ever had a stuffed washing machine and like the soap can't get to the stains because there's just no movement it's too stuffed that's what happens in your stomach and then what happens is that it becomes putrid because the enzymes are not coming to the food it can not break down the food the body's like oh my gosh it's four hours later or five next meal what are we going to do with this stuff here that hasn't been digested and hasn't been decomposed so it, it, it freaks out and like, oh, I can't send this to the heart and I can't send too much to the liver and the pancreas. I got to store this as fat because it's just putrid food. Um, and, and, then, and then it ends up being too much in your gut and not able to get, uh, you know, um, <laughs> uh, you know, eliminated, and then it goes back up the vagus, which is in the back part of your, you know, internal organs, and back up to the brain. So toxic, acidic, fermented ugh, type of, like, food is now going back to your brain, and then that's why you start feeling brain fog and all over the place. Um, so... It's really, really, you know, um, very important not to overeat. But it's important, again, to have sufficient protein because if you do not have sufficient protein, your body will cannibalize its own muscle tissue in an effort to nourish itself. It will eat up whatever it needs from, like, your bones. And that's where arthritis comes and pains in the body because especially like if you're working out and you're breaking down muscle tissue 
So the food you eat afterwards is what repairs those muscles and, and completes your physique, you know, um, and its ability to change and lose the weight. So again, uh, we don't want to like steal away from our body parts because we're not eating efficiently. Um, so, and so there's many other processes um, in the body that's connected to weight gain. Um, first of all, the, if your adrenal system is not efficient, your thyroids aren't functioning, your hormones are out of whack, your endocrine system also, um, you might be like super sensitive to insulin um, because when, uh, when the pancreas cannot produce enough insulin to meet the needs of the glucose utilization in your body, the result is unwanted weight gain. Uh, many people are glucose insensitive, intolerant, um, and they just, uh, it really wrecks extra havoc on, on their body. And so then it wrecks havoc on their insulin and their glucose, in, um, and, and then the dysfunctions start happening. Um, especially if you're a carb, uh, if you're not a carb efficient person, if you're a fat protein person, which is a result um, of extra, uh, you know, carbs, um, uh, then this, uh, you know, insulin problem ends up, um, you know, really causing you even more so to have problems, especially if, you're, again, if you're a fat protein type of person. Um, and today, today's proteins are not alike. First of all, they're super processed in the farms. Um, there's so much chemicals, you know, uh, and, 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 these, and the way they process bread it used to be you got real bread. Now they put all these, you'll see 70 ingredients for bread, which really should be four, you know, water, spelt flour, or, you know, gluten-free, you know, rice flour, whole grain rice flour, you know? And that's it, but it's so processed so it could be on the shelf for 10 years and, you know, um, and there's so much sodium, you know, added to things and it's just, it, food isn't the way it used to be. So we got to even be careful when we eat carbs, you know, even if we're a carb proficient um, personality type. Um, so we got to really be careful um, to be internally lean and healthy because that's really our goal um so i want to look into now um some other information um that hopefully you know will help you too and this is from the donna ecology diet book I'm sorry, Body Ecology book by Donna Gates. Amazing. Um, it's incredible, like if you are suffering. Not only will it help you lose weight, but if you're really suffering from a disease, um, you can take a lot, uh, a lot of your own uh, self-care to bring you to that um, healing. I, at one point, had Hashimoto's disease, which is an autoimmune disease. Uh, and I went from doctor to doctor, and everyone said, oh, now you have it, it's lifelong, you can't fix it, it's forever, here's a pill. I was like, um, kind of naive, and I listened to them. First of all, the pills were making me sluggish, sleepy, I, I, I just couldn't. And, and the doctor said, no, no, you have to, you have to. I'm like, no, there's a better route. And by miracle, a friend of mine sent me this book. She didn't even know I was sick. Like, she just knows I'm into health and this. And I was like, oh, my goodness. This is exactly, I think, from Hashem, like, to help me here. Because I can't take these meds. It's not good for me. I'm not functioning on them. And, and they're saying I can't take off the medication. Um, so I 
read the book, I felt it had everything like that I needed and it was making super sense. Um, and it's a whole uh, like a week detox, which says um, to basically, you know, eat very lightly, you know, uh, having more alkaline diet, which we're going to get into the differences of what's alkaline and what's more acidic. And then, you know, um, after the three day of no oil, no salt, and just having a very alkaline diet, then, you know, you can add, um, you know, light proteins like fish and maybe eggs. And, um, and then after that, like, voila, I was feeling so much better. I can't even tell you. Um, I then ended up taking a blood test and like, uh, I think maybe like three weeks later, a month later, and my Hashimoto's was gone and my thyroids were normal. And it was so exciting to me. I started then recommending this book to other people and I started like taking my family members to these health retreats to have them do what I did at home because it was just too difficult for you know, um, us uh, visiting in Israel. So I would every year go and they were having incredible results that all the people, like my mother was on a wheelchair. She couldn't even put her leg up on the wheelchair herself. We had to lift up her leg. And after a week doing this detox, you know, uh, very alkaline diet, she ended up like walking with like incredible, like, incredible difference and every year I would go and every year everyone would see everyone radiant and losing weight and feeling strong and, and, and alive. So she talks about expansive and contractive foods. She talks about um, alkaline versus acid and I'm going to bring about some of her points here. Um, hopefully we'll cover it um, in time. So she actually says it's very important to properly combine food. So um, it's a, like it's really critical not to eat starches and carbs with protein because again, what happens is there's two different enzymes, and the and, and I studied this elsewhere also at the Olamot retreat in Israel and they war with each other. The body just doesn't know, well, should I use this enzyme? No, it's, it's this enzyme I need. And like the enzymes don't get to the food. And again, the food pet, uh, gets putrid um, and the wrong uh, energy of like uh, bloatedness and energy of feeling like basically that the food is not being digested properly. Um, so, uh, and without the proper enzyme, as we said earlier, it remains longer in the digestive tract and starts fermenting and becomes putrid and toxic and acidic and is poisonous. And it actually then starts to weaken our immune system. And then the body is a perfect ground for any virus to come in. Oh, you're so acidic. Boom. I can live here and thrive. And then it pro, you know, propagate, um, populates whatever virus that's on you and before you know it you're sick and long term also um, so she also talks about the um, the expansive foods and contracting foods and then foods that don't like make you swing um, so and, and you need both again but not in the same meal um, so like there's foods like meat and chicken and it causes the body to contract and again too much of it can make the body very tight and slows down the circulation then the elimination of waste it, it just um, is at a standstill and it's just it's too much for the body to handle uh, and then you know constipation and all kinds of you know elimination problems uh, and the body can't function right. So um, she suggests, especially if you're not well, to do up to even 80% of more alkaline diet and um, more of the, um, you know, uh, giving the body um, 
like a, a break. Uh, her theory is, is that too much food, then you need too much energy to digest the food, and then you don't have enough energy to heal. So if you eat moderately and more efficiently and give your body a break and not overload your body with too much to digest, then you have excess energy to then digest your food, which makes sense because you only have so much energy. Either you're gonna use the energy to you know, break down the food or you free up some of your energy instead of breaking down food to heal. Um, and again, proper combining helps. Um, so, she highly suggests fermented food, things like apple cider vinegar, probiotics, prebiotics, and especially, you know, even with whatever blood type that you have, with these recommendations of, again, not combining foods improperly and adding all these probiotic uh, substances in your diet, it could really help your body keep well and, and again, uh, become very efficient in, um, you know, keeping your body more alkaline so that your, your body is not a feeding ground for any kind of virus or bacteria to really be able to settle in your body. Um, I have to say, that I think it was Lear Pasteur who said, don't fear the germ, fear that your body is a good habitat for the germ to propagate, uh, populate. So, so let's discuss the acidic alkaline problem. Too much acid in your blood, especially if you're not combining food properly, then turns the food to acid, or too much food, or wrong amounts, um, then, you know, you're, you, you become more acidic. Um, and that's where illnesses come to attack, that's where chronic fatigue, that's where allergies come from, that's where arthritis comes from. Because um, if your body is too acidic, it starts to steal, again, like we learned before, uh, from your own body's reserve, and you deplete yourself from your own storage, from your own body, from your own bones, the minerals that you need. Um, so, which then ends up making your blood excessively acidic, and that weakens your respiratory system, you can't breathe the oxygen as, as easily, you have further fatigue, further mental fog, and a lack of clarity. So, um, she writes in her chart, um, which on page 32, uh, her recommendations of the more alkaline, um, you know, and the, and the acidic. Again, you need both, but you got to be careful how much, you know. Um, and again, according to your blood type, will let you know how much more maybe than another that you can you know, have a higher percentage of, let's say, that protein than, let's say, the carb-efficient personality. So, uh, highly recommended um, is in the, in, the, uh, in the middle zone, foods that are more alkaline, especially if you're detoxing and, um, you know, recovering from an illness. So there's raw vegetables and salads, green vegetables, soaked and sprouted almonds. There's ocean vegetables, winter squash, root, ve uh, root vegetables, and body ecology diet grains only, which is, again, as we said earlier, quinoa, buckwheat, millet, amaranth. Um, and, and again, you could do the brown rice a little later on, but this is when you're doing like a three-day tox, uh, when you're doing all alkaline. Um, then there are the, uh, of course, raw vegetable juices, herbs and spices, there's raw butter and, you know, lemons and limes and, and G, those of you who are familiar with that. And the more contracting foods that you have to be careful and just do about, you know, 
Uh, 20% when you're trying to heal. Again, normally, if you're protein efficient, you can have up to like, you know, 40 or 50%. Um, again, depending on your age and other factors. Um, and you have to try it out. Some, as you're older, um, I remember going to this acupuncturist and she's like, no, like just two cubes of beef, that's, that's good enough. And the zone diet talks about it, you know, the palm of your hand, like it's not, it doesn't have to be like those Flintstone steaks. It's not going to be good for you long term in your heart as well as right after. Um, this is just too much. Um, so, so here are like there's fish and fowl and beef and eggs and uh, sea salt that are contractive but are important for a healthy diet. Um, and we know, and in the Torah it actually teaches us that we need to elevate all of the food groups. It's like, that's our mission, like to, re like to elevate and, and bring godliness into everything that we do, especially, you know, the spiritual factors of, um, you know, uh, the way it affects our spiritual sensitivity when we overeat and when it's not a godly act and when it's like just, you know, um, kind of animalistic, you know. Now, there are issues. It's not easy to break habits and that's maybe a whole nother class, but I have that class recorded. Um, but I do want to touch upon a little bit and it's also a lot discussed in my Reaching New Heights uh, through health and happiness. Uh, you can look online for yournewheights.com. Some of my health classes are there on Torah Cafe, I think, as well. And um, TorahAnytime.com also has a lot of my health classes. But I do want to mention the emotional difficulty uh, um, and why it's so hard to break habits. Again, <sighs> Food tastes good, and it's so hard to eat. You know, I hate, I almost hate, like I just don't like chicken and fish, and, 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 and I'm more a protein type uh, uh, fish. In. And it's not easy to like force yourself, one, to eat foods. It's just not like, you know, appetizing. It's, it's really an effort. But also, good tasting food that you like more actually create happy chemicals in your brain. And we get addicted to these happy chemicals. So it's not so easy just to like, okay, I made my decision and I'm just gonna eat like, cause I, this way, cause I'm more, uh, you know, uh, protein and fat efficient. When you don't even like protein that much. Um, it's not easy. And then to top it all off, you get happy chemicals when you do eat the foods you like. So it's like, it really triggers in your brain happiness. <sighs> yeah. And also there's the, the um, you know, there's, we, we long and yearn like for these sparks of holiness in these food items. So it's also like we're attracted to the food. It, there's something to it that makes us want it spiritually as well. So, you know, it, it's, it's, it is a challenge, but I promise you it's not, it's not an impossible deed. It's, it, you know, we don't have to stress out and we don't have to, you know, 24 seven be so on top of our diets. As long as again, we don't overeat and we don't mix foods. We don't mix fruit and, and like all these sugary honey types of products and bakery goods with after a meal, it just really changes everything. So we can keep it simple and add whatever you can, you know, from today's class. And realize, you know, there is such a thing called emotional eating. I actually wrote a book called uh, Yehuda Gets Fit that goes into all the brain training techniques of, you know, um, training your brain to get out of the bad habits. Because you can do other things that can create these happy chemicals like exercising, like bonding and going to volunteer with people. The more busy you are learning and, and meditating and, and connecting to, to Hashem like, and, and get like the pleasure sparks and the pleasure chemicals from other things that you do, do have the diminishing of the addiction 
to the happy chemicals of the food. Um, there's something called pairing, where you can train your brain to see the foods that are not good for you, um, especially if the doctors are warning you, like you really, you know, you're about to be chas v'chaliyah, not you. Someone's like, you know, getting news from the doctor. You know, you have a family history of diabetics. And like your, your numbers are really not good or your cholesterol levels are really not good and you know, you have in your family history heart attack or cancer. So like, especially those types of people that it's emergency almost state and they really have to do something about it. They can train their brain by meditating and visualizing the bad foods with like worms and black smoke and, and like, you know, like repulsive images to that food, like that cookie turns into like a bat or something and wants to bite you, whatever, whatever works for you. And I did it actually, <laughs> you know, because I was a sugaraholic and I, and I would eat foods and I would not be able to sleep at night. It would keep me up till four in the morning and then I couldn't wake up in the morning. I had my own journey, let me tell you, um, even though I wasn't like, you know, looking so overweight, um, but it was causing like major dysfunction in my life. And that's, this book is based on my journeys and all the books I've read and all the, like, you know, tactics that have helped me. Um, so, and then you, like, see very healthy food and, and you see it, like, with the, like, like just a, a glow and, and, and the energy you feel and the imagery and then you, and then you see your body, like, really fit and strong and that you're capable of like being functional all day with vitality and energy. And you see these images, like, and you, or you see in the refrigerator, you, one side of the refrigerator is like really like toxic foods that are not, first of all, it shouldn't be in your refrigerator. That's a whole other story and tactic, but like, you know, um, okay, let's say at a bar mitzvah and you're there, there's no way out. Like you didn't have the food in your refrigerator, but then you see like the, food table of all the like foods that are so not good for you like you know turning into acid like if, like ashes and fumes and you're just like repulsed from it and then you see the table with the salads and all the healthy foods and you're just like seeing image of yourself being able to dance away the whole night because you know how many times you go to a wedding and you can't dance because you overate you know and you see your plate exactly what you need there's tactics to train your brain to get in the habit um, you know, to be able to break the old habits. There's um, also, you know, ways by which you can, um, like uh, the book is called the 60 Second Fix, that like it takes even just 60 seconds of daily meditation to like really change the bad habits. It's incredible. Like it doesn't have to be years and years of hard work. Um, that's the research and the meditation actually helps your brain calm down to be able to change like its neural pathways because the habits and the addictions the body got used to and it's like it needs like a new pathway in your brain to like switch tracks and and it takes about 40 days um, to be able to help your brain start to create new patterns of behavior and imagery is fantastic because your brain doesn't know the difference between past present and future so you can really trick your brain into you know um, the behavior that you want because maybe you lost a lot of weight and typically as Dr. Goglia says like it's so easy to gain the weight back and more because they're not efficiently eating the type of food that they need because it's it, you can lose weight on all kinds of fad diets but then all of a sudden your body can't take it anymore because it's not really eating properly and efficiently um, and so people gain the weight back so you can re one client of mine called me and she had been on 12 steps. She lost the weight. She showed me these gorgeous pictures of her. And I was like, oh my gosh. And she said in six months during the COVID and she, and she even actually broadcasted her results and mentioned, you know, gave me credit. I was so thankful. But, um, and I said, like, you have muscle memory, you know, 
in your brain, you, you know, so you can, you'll get there quicker than the average person, and she did, because she did succeed before, but then I helped her with these types of information and these, you know, brain tricks, and, and she really did, um, really did a fantastic job in a very short period of time um, to get back to her original weight. So, I bless you all, that one, that you tuned in here. Uh, I bless you all that you don't get like overstressed because being overstressed is really not good for your body. Um, I remember a story where somebody was having trouble losing weight and the Rebbe actually told them, did you try Simcha? Like, because again, when you're happy, your blood is healthy. When your blood is healthy, things are flowing. And when you're, you know, stressed and when you're annoyed, and you're frustrated, and you're too tense, then the body constricts and holds in everything, and there's no flow because you're so tense and so uptight. And so, like, literally, your body becomes very rigid, and there's no flow, and it can't eliminate the toxins, and it can't eliminate because the body is not flowing. So let's be happy. Let's enjoy a little good food. Like, you know, it, like it's okay, but at least, Know how to combine your food, at least, again, um, you know, drink enough, at least um, don't overeat so that your enzymes are getting to your food, and, and definitely don't skip meals, you know, um, thinking that, oh, it's okay, I'll lose weight, or it's, it's just the opposite. So many people have told me that it's not even to be countable over the 33 years of my counseling practice. Um, and let's enjoy. Let's just like add these little different tips in a happy way and not like, you know, be too tense about it and, um, and feel good and feel alive and feel your vitality, like, you know, um, getting back. I'm telling you, it has so helped me and I hope it so helps you. I bless you. May we keep dancing together at different people's smachot. May we keep having the energy and the vitality to keep being helpful and being kind to others. Because when you're overtired and you're bloating and you have a headache, you're just, it's just so hard on even your relationships. It, it takes its toll. So we want to be careful to be our best and be more responsible of how we take care of our very precious, very holy body that God entrusted to us and be our best. <laughs> so I will uh, open the lines here and unmute to ask for questions and any of you on Facebook that want to ask questions. And please PM me if you, you know, don't want to be... conference participants, press one. To mute conference participants in lecture mode, press 2. To unmute conference participants, press 3. Hi out there. Are unmuted. If anybody has a question or wants to say anything, please feel free. This is being recorded, just so you know. How do you find out what kind of personality? Um, so you, you take a blood test and... You, um, you look at your, as I mentioned, the five different things he mentions to look at, and according to that, your doctor, um, he says, the, you know, the HDL, the LDL, the cholesterol, and the triglyceride level, you can find out what blood type you are, according to those blood tests. And you can get the book, Turn Up the Heat. Uh, it is a bit complicated, I have to say. Uh, a bit scientific for me, uh, even I've done a lot of research. Um, but it could also help you, um, you know, have, or again, the Body Ecology Diet Book, which was so helpful to me. And again, my book, uh, Reaching New Heights Through Health and Happiness, which has a lot of information um, on how to go about really uh, becoming more healthy. But you may know yourself by how you feel after you eat certain foods. I tell people to create a journal. How do I feel after I eat this? How do I feel after I eat that? 
do I feel like I'm so tired or do I feel like the food was good for me that I feel energized and full of life? If, if after what you're eating made you so tired, question whether you ate too much or combine food improperly or maybe it is not the food for your blood type. And there's another book on blood type. It's a blood, Dr. Diagamo. It's uh, if you're blood type O, you're more protein. If you're blood type that, that's another good book to get where it very much can clarify according to your blood type, what's the food you more need to eat. Which I haven't read that in a while, but uh, this really also made a lot of sense to me going through the experience that I just experienced recently. Any other questions? Um, thank you for joining and I hope that was like, you know, helpful to you. What is the name of the book you mentioned that you landed when you uh, were looking to Hashimoto's? What is the name of that? It's called Body Ecology Diet. Highly recommend this book. This is easy, not difficult. The other one is a bit difficult. The B Body Ecology Diet by um, Donna Gates. Very easy to follow, very easy to do. I did it for myself for one week, and then I've helped and you know, many follow this diet included with all the other stuff because many times people can't follow it because they have habits that they can't break. So the brain training helps them be able to implement the body ecology diet. Um, body ecology diet by Donna Gates. And the other one is turn up the heat. Unlock the fat burning power of your metabolism by Dr. Philip Goglia. And mine is Reaching New Heights Through Health and Happiness, and you can get them on Amazon. Um, definitely, I was buying bottled alkaline water, saw a difference, but then I got a machine in my home and saw like 100% difference. It's really that much better. Drink all the time? I drink it all the time, and even when I travel, I bring it with me, yeah. Baruch Hashem. So if anyone's interested, you can call me at 646-243-0842, um, and I can give you any more information um, and be more helpful. 646-243-0842. I've been reading an alkaline uh, or dye book, actually. Wow, that's a whole nother class as well. Um, but I only had an hour here. Well, hopefully we'll have other opportunities to breathe and, <laughs> and do other things together. Please, God. Okay. Um, Anyone else still on the line have any other questions? I hope this has been helpful and informative. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Blessings and please, uh, I have many health classes. You can go on yournewheights.com, look them up, listen, get informed, and uh, brain train <laughs> and get the... Uh, Get the help that you need. Especially right now with all that's going on in the world. We cannot have an acidic body. It, we just have to be more careful to create the habitat so that there's no way any germs can like, you know, uh, attach itself to us. So many people suffering arthritis, so many people with diabetes and cholesterol problems and heart issues. Do you know that it's 1 in 39 seconds, I think it was, if you look at the Heart Association, like 1 in 39 seconds, only even in America, people die from just a heart attack. That's 
too many numbers. It's, you know, like everyone's fussing about this COVID thing and it's not as high as the heart attacks, I'm telling you. So we gotta get it a little more responsible and a little more proactive in keeping our body alkaline and eating more like efficiently. Oh my, from the bottom of my heart, I can't handle the information of all the WhatsApps. Please pray for this one. My, and my friends, my friends, young friends, like suffering and their family members suffering. This is the little I can do to help, I hope and pray, like really to awaken the desire to feel more free, to take little steps, you know, baby steps to protect yourselves and the baby steps can add 20 better years of your life and your day will be a better day i'm telling you please my blessings to you Thanks, all right with love and we will uh, join again and also can i ask you a question yes hi eliza yeah, no, no. yeah hi listen also is the the it's very interesting. It's, it's so different like what I've learned. In one book it says, don't have carbs at night. Another book says, have your protein more during the day. It's very not clear. I guess you have to figure it out on your own. Some people can't live if they don't have a good, strong breakfast. Some people are nauseated to eat a big breakfast. For me, I can't have a big breakfast. I need to like wait like hours until I can eat really, you know? So each person is so different. You really just kind of have to figure it out a bit on your own. Again, and some people will be eating a big breakfast. It's just too much food and that's why they can't. Or some people are eating the wrong foods because they're more protein, fat, you know, blood type. And, and that's why they can't eat breakfast because they've been eating, you know, pancakes and muffins with sugar and, and, and fake oils and fake salts. I had a salt problem. I didn't realize I was tensely, like I would have cramping and major cramping. And even in the middle of the night, I'd have such cramps I couldn't sleep. It was like, like an Aesop attacking, you know, the Aesop angel attacking Yaakov. It was like really hurting and painful. And so I happened to go to the restroom and I happened to like, you know, okay, I'll read something while I'm here in the restroom. And then it said like, it was like the calcium lie book. And that's when it's, I got onto the sea salt, the right sea salt. Because it said if you're having cramping, you know, uh, then you're not having enough minerals from the right salt. And I switched my salt and I haven't had those cramps since. I take the salt with me when I travel because I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it. I take it to restaurants. I don't leave home without it either. It's that critical of a difference. Which salt, which salt do you use? The Himalayan salt. Um, uh, you know the that, pink one, the real yeah, the real pink one, the one that or higher. Crystal. If it says crystal on it, then it's part of the rock. Oil. Yeah, I mean, I have also the rocks that we actually like, you know, crush when I'm home. But I get the ones that aren't crushed for when I travel. Anyway, so it 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 can make all the difference in the world. I was suffering so much from the fake oils, from the sugar from, you know, eating too much, from, and all these books, and all these research, and all these brain training techniques, because I would study it, and I just couldn't change it. I kept go, go, falling back to really bad habits. So, some people just don't have the wherewithal, because they're so addicted to the happy chemicals with the wrong food. So, that's why, you know, I shared what I shared in my book, because it's really difficult sometimes for people to really change the habits. Oh, and I can't wait to my health cookbook, which Eliza, you have to send me those recipes. Okay, we're online and it's being recorded. Um, because it's really hard to make healthy food taste good sometimes. Uh, okay, we'll talk personally. Anyway, wish it... Do you think rice is good? Is rice good? If you're gonna have rice, it's whole grain brown rice, but again, 
Um, depending on, you know, you could eat 20% if even your protein, you know, um, fat efficient blood type, you still can have the carbs, but just make sure 20% and make sure not to eat it with protein. Maybe eat it as like a little snack, a little vegetables and snack. Why? Right. And Donna Gates talks about that, that, that too much brown rice as your main staple is not good. Um, so, but a little bit in moderation, you know, enjoy it. Maybe once or twice a week. Yeah, yeah. And even if you have it like every other day, but just a little, like not a whole mound and 80% of your plate. And then, and then the bread, and then the beef and the chicken, and uh, you know, even shabab, you have to be very careful. Too much food, you know. You know how many people sleep away their Shabbos? And it's Normally, Rambam talks about light foods first, and then go to the heavier foods, if, let's say, you know, you're at a festivity and there are really a lot of food. So, you know, you'll eat the vegetables with the rice, wait a bit, like 10 minutes, 20 minutes, then eat the beef. And, you know, sometimes I tell, like, the person sitting next to me, make sure that the waiter doesn't take the food because I'm going to go down, because I make sure not to eat it together. And many times I just take it to go because, like, I already ate the fish and, and you know, enough. I don't need the second course. And then I have a next meal ready and I don't have to worry about tomorrow. <laughs> so there's like things you could do, you know, to really, um, you know, make sure you have efficient energy and, and feel full of vitality. All right. Thanks. Blessings to everyone. We will do another round of this again. There's much more to share, hopefully. All right. Love you all. Hopefully from my heart to your heart. And uh, soon I'll be in Brooklyn, so I'll see you, some of you, and we'll do yeah, some classes please. together there. All right, we'll keep you, we'll keep each other posted. Yeah. You all. Yeah, all right, Thanks, Lila Tov. Bye bye. To stop conference recording, press one. To return to the this session is no longer being recorded. I don't see any questions here. Okay. I'll, I'll write the names of the books soon. I mean, I did say it many times, but for those of you, I'll maybe uh, send it uh, in writing. Okay, I mean, I'll show you the pictures. Okay, thanks for joining.